welcome to the module three of the HVAC design of hospitals in healthcare facility. Let me quickly introduce uh, or recap whatever the things we studied in module one and module two. Both the modules we understood about the basic difference between air conditioning for the healthcare facility and a normal building. And we studied potential causes of poor air, air quality in a hospital. And then we also studied uh, main routes responsible for infection in a hospital, and then infection control, then different kinds of isolation rooms and different kinds of pressures to be maintained in uh, various areas in a hospital. And then we also reviewed uh, various type of refrigerant system and its major components typically used for our AC application in a hospital. This is what we have studied in our uh, earlier two modules. Now, in this module three, uh, as I told you, we will be focused mostly on the air distribution because infection is the main uh, prime factor when as an air conditioning engineer you should understand when you are designing an air conditioning system uh, in a hospital. Uh, so in this model, we will talk about air handling units, fan coil units, and its sizing for a hospital HVAC applications. And in relation to that, various international standards like ASHRAE, American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, Air Conditioning Engineers, and then SIPS, that's called the Chartered Institute of Building Service Engineers, and then uh, Health Technical Memorandum, etc. Uh, this all time to time we will uh, put it. And we'll be also, uh, you have to review all these modules because later when we are going to do the real exercise, probably we are going to use all these type of uh, uh, key points what I am highlighting in this module will be used in that. I start this uh, presentation module three with the importance. This is the latest I mean, ASHRAE journal. Uh, this figure I have taken. You know, this figure purposely I introduced to make you to understand all the HVAC professionals, the importance of uh, designing air conditioning system, especially for the hospitals. You know, see that how the figures clearly shows that. Um, how this the indoor air quality affect the human health. Uh, you cannot see the air, but if you don't read the air, it treats the human being very badly. Uh, it is all established fact that indoor air pollutants affect the cell membranes and organs in predictable ways, allowing quantification of the health impact of a single and combined compounds and thermal matrices. This is, I have taken from the ASHRAE Journal in November 2022. The main idea of sharing the latest uh, technology, latest research, so that you will aware. And then this is all you should keep it. And then when you are designing an uh, air conditioning system for a hospital, you should use all the things. So let me share a typical hospital. I know many of air conditioning engineers, you must have good experience in designing uh, uh, comfort air conditioning for various kinds of buildings. Uh, various kinds of uh, industries, process air conditioning. So uh, hospital, as I told you, is also really a very typical one, a very uh, challenging tasks are there when you are designing. So to just to, to for the continuity of discussion, a typical hospital consists of a uh, major department like uh, outpatient department, inpatient department, that means patient ward, different kinds of ward like medical, surgery, pediatric, uh, OB and gyno and delivery suits, uh, CCU, then burn units, kabu, that is uh, for the baby care unit, ortho, special need, various uh, inpatient in wards, depending upon the specialty of the hospital. Then we have uh, radiologists, then we have OT, operation theaters and ICUs, then we have isolation room, then we have uh, nuclear medicines, oncology. Then in addition to that, we have administration and finance department, normal buildings, then to control all these things, we have services like medical services, biomedical services, air conditioning is one of the services. Then we are also training, development, patient counseling and all the things in that. So an architect normally understand all this process and accordingly he plans. Then as a HVAC engineer, our duty is, as I told you in the earlier module two, module two that you have to collect the data properly and you have to do the load estimation, and then based on that, you are going to select the refrigeration equipment, particularly chiller. It can be a water cooled or air cooled. And then we are also trying to select the air handling unit or FCUs, whatever it is, and the ducting distribution. This all will be, we will see in the uh, next uh, module also. First, you should understand the recommended temperature and humidity because this is what normally we are going to take inside. 
that is who the world health organization has identified mm. room conditions around 18 to 20 degree as a safe for the normal population but 20 degree was recommended for the minimum for the old and the very young studies indicate that the infection increases below 16 degree centigrade and uh, for the humidity is a very important factor because uh, when you have more humidity means it allows the moisture moisture is a place for the mold to grow and bacterias to grow in that and then sometimes what happen if you don't design if you over design many times the condensation will occur you know in the air conditioned area this condensation within the hospital area is a very serious uh, problem and it creates a, a place platform for the uh, mold to grow in that so these are basically what you should understand the recommended dry bulb temperature is approximately between 18 to 20 to 4 degree and humidity is 50 to 60 percent in that. Now, and you just understand just for your idea uh, how this uh, humidity factor, you know, the the safe zone you can see in the green. All other zones you have a problem. Uh, if you don't maintain between this uh, 50 to 60 or 40 to 60, um, uh, that is the safest zone to maintain the humidity. This is also uh, to make you understand the importance of relative humidity when you are. selecting inside condition you know this all you may have to you have you may have to educate your end user the owner of the hospital when you are taking the selection in that going to select ahu mm -hmm. because you are or there are two type tailor made and ready made majority of the um, air conditioning consultant when you are designing after the heat load calculation you are going to select the ahu from the different manufacturers because they they have a different kind of air quantity and then different kind of configurations so but you should always keep uh, some of the important points uh, when you are selecting uh, when you are selecting and when you are also location of the air handling units this because you have to also interact with your uh, architect very closely uh, the refrigeration system we, whether it is a water cooled or air cooled create the chilled water and the chilled waters are the ahus or fcus correct that you should understand as if you don't uh, select or if you don't design the ahu on fcu or if you even associate a ducting uh, network improper distribution definitely is a source for the infection so you need to be very very careful we need to follow all the standards what they are telling in that and now the owner also very very uh, they are also very aware especially after the covid 19 every individual is very much uh, want to know what type of air they are breathing and especially in the hospital the staffs who are working the doctors the nurses they every time even the infection control department and they put so much questions on the operation and maintenance team of their conditioning people so as a design engineer you need to be very very careful you should understand air does not get cleaned up by itself we need a special equipment to monitor and control the quality of air so it all depends upon the the more you the stringent control requirements and the more costly is the equipment you have to install so many time what happened the owner of the hospital he always try to compromise with the at capital cost so as a hvac consultant as a hvac design engineer you have to make them to understand the importance of this one so these are some of the general design consideration uh, the the plan should be located so that it is remote from the possible source of contamination uh, that is very important and also the air handling units should be located in an accessible area uh, from the unauthorized entry you know hospital is a place it's a public place it is not like a industry or process where the security is there so hospital is a place where everybody will be seat so you have to place in such a way that um, uh, secured from the unauthorized entry you know public is coming you have to be very careful sometimes people don't understand uh, some of your air handling units will be located within the uh, hospital ward area which is the side of the plant in the ward uh, end of the ward so sometimes patient by mistake also they open and then the moment they go inside uh, this all rotating equipment it will all uh, prone for accident and also you should understand all the ventilation system should be clearly identified with the proper uh, permanent label 
this is also ashray recommends various color code and all the things of course this all you must have already learned during your part of your heat load calculation each filter pressure drop is should be monitored by sensors like and it should be linked to the bms because pressure drop is very very important in that various kinds of air handling units uh, because we have a normal air handling unit we have a air handling units used for the operation theater separately we have used for the special type of air handling units for the intensive care units like that sometimes uh, you also uh, the cooling coil or heating coil you design in your calculation you take the phase velocity if you consider the phase velocity more than 2 meter per second get eliminated trip eliminator is required it all depends upon what type of uh, psychrometric uh, in, uh, chart and what type of you know, packages you are putting in the air handling unit because in the air handling unit there are a lot of equipments it is a coating heating cooling coil then you have blower your filters your humidification packages you know many things heating coil like that so this all you have to understand and then you should ensure that water should not be accumulated in any part whether it's air handling unit or even the duct network or in the coil side you know that is very very important because if the water is there it is always a prone for the growth for the bacteria so you should understand then you should also try to provide a single zone or multi zone or you can always go for a dual duct system this all we be learning when we are doing a typical hospital in that so these are various things we must have learned in the in the duct design and in system generally we try for the every advantage has got a single zone and multi zone you know as a consultant as a design engineer i remember i go with the 3 4 5 or minimum four schemes alternative schemes each schemes i always go with the positive point and the negative point then i go and then i discuss in the preliminary design i go and discuss with my end user and the doctors and everybody even i involve the maintenance team also in that and based on their feedback we finalize the final one nowadays we have this uh, variable air volume air handling units also there so this all you should keep in your mind when you are designing the hospital in that another important point is the filtration filtration itself is a, another specialized uh, area if you see now there is a institute called as uh, waterloo filtration institute based in america they are doing so much research on that they have published the latest uh, uh, research and latest update technological update on the filtration especially uh, air handling unit you know uh, when we are selecting the filters and we are locating the filters of course then maintenance of the filters also another important thing so um, one thing you should always keep in your mind proper design and maintenance of air handling units and the regular cleaning of ducts and accessories is one of the important strategies to ensure the better indoor air quality in a hospital in that and then main another important thing is also you should understand about the acoustical requirement of air handling unit you know as i told you you are going most of the time most of the air handling unit we are selecting from the ready made very few cases we are going for the tailor made because tailor made will be more expensive on manufacturing than inspection quality control and all the things are involved so you have to clear about the noise level acoustic treatment in the sometimes most of the air handling units when you are going to keep inside the hospital area the noise level within the as per the ashray standard used to maintain the decibel levels and then when you are designing your duct also you know, sometimes um, uh, uh, operation theaters and all the things the velocity because you may have to you have to make a laminar flow inside the operation theaters you need to understand about the velocity recommended velocity as per the ashray ashray 62.1 it's very clearly defined certain velocities to be maintained um, we have to also maintain the different kind of pressures in different kind of rooms as per the requirement which have been discussed in the module 1 okay and then uh, you need to have also have a clear ventilation strategy uh, and the proper design uh, at the early stage of design we have to identify very clearly what are the positive positive room negative pressure room and what are the neutral pressure room and what are the clean rooms this all have to be very well identified and accordingly you have to segregate separate separate don't combine um, um, some of the common air handling units i have i've seen some uh, hospital where these people have uh, put uh, some air handling units common area for laboratory and the waiting area which is uh, not recommended as per the ashray that means the consultant has not done uh, properly that the consultant was not aware about the healthcare design because in the laboratory 
uh, air treatment should be different and waiting area or the inpatient uh, op opd area is different so you should not have a common return air or common exhaust this air you should never allow the air should mix with the contaminated area from the other areas so these all you have to keep in your mind you know uh, you have to have a ultra clean areas such as operation theaters icus and all the things so this all you have to keep in your mind now come to the ventilation system definitely uh, we know air changes per hour we discussed last time as i told you when whenever we add the air changes the more the air changes the more load uh, and every time you have to take the fresh air from the ambient conditions especially in gulf countries when the outside temperature is goes 45 degree to 50 degree centigrade almost 9 months in a year and that is to be cooled and uh, dehumidified or uh, then you have to make it sometimes uh, probably another uh, humidification to reach 22 or 23 degree and then 50 to 50 per percent relative humidity and every time and then you have to after serving the area you have to completely uh, let it out uh, some areas like ot 100 percent fresh air you don't return air is not allowed so some areas but then it, the load on your refrigeration equipment will be very very heavy so you need to be as an engineer you need to have an economical and optimal optimal design you know and similarly you have to also understand the different kind of filtration if you don't allow put the proper filtration in your your handling units bad filtration um, um, definitely will not control the outdoor contaminants you know so this all you have to keep in a ventilation system in that i'm just telling you know many a many time we always try to have a heat recovery units in our handling units i will show some actual figure in of the last uh, in the last of this my photos we have a heat recovery ventilators and energy recovery ventilators two type actually generally majority of the people they go for the heat recovery you can see that fresh air from the out, outside and uh, exhaust from the return air and then they try to have a, there is a heat exchanger and that cools the fresh air and then it goes to the this one and that but generally um, recommend this uh, uh, energy recovery ventilators uh, which is this is preferred than the heat recovery because we are very energy conscious nowadays and for that purpose the astra standard 170 exclusively for the healthcare facilities design for the air conditioning system some points basically you should understand uh, the minimum number of total air changes indicated shall be either supplied for positive pressure rooms or exhausted for negative pressure room that you should always consider which is in standard 170 if you don't have one standard astra 170 i will also send it and uh, air change rates in excess of the minimum levels are expected in some cases in order to maintain the room temperature and design relative humidity condition based upon the space cooling or heating load depending when you are doing actually the relative humidity range is listed or the minimum or maximum allowable to any point within the design temperature range required for that space these are some of the points what astra standard is telling if pressure monitoring device alarms are installed allowances shall be made to prevent nuisance alarms it's very important sometimes most of the times we have get the false alarm also that also you have to keep in mind in that when you are designing in that and then exhaust ducts um, normally um, take the all uh, harmful uh, contaminants contaminants shall be negatively pressurized related to space through which they pass so that exhaust air cannot leak into the occupied space Uh, then it should not mix with the supply return or outdoor air ducts or plenums i'm telling i have i know i have seen uh, almost i i have been working in this uh, healthcare for the last uh, more than 15 20 years i've seen whatever you design when it comes to uh, operation and maintenance those people have a different kind of skill and more over the end user uh, they don't uh, they keep the door open we have provided doors but st this still keep the door open and the door uh, air get always mixed and that that is the reason the always the infection gets spread in hospital okay then you should also use the proper material and then you should also keep the outdoor air take should be located in right place so that uh, the air cycling yeah, short cycling should not take place you know this i have last uh, in module 2 i have seen some photos in this also i am going to see some of the practical photos i am going to show you that now let me come to the filtration because as i told you filtration is very very important and we have a free filters fine filters and hifa filters hifa filters we called as high high efficiency particular filters you understand you should note that 
the more the filters, the more the pressure drop. The static pressure will increase and you have to go for a higher static pressure of the blower in their handling unit selection. And then it will also order the running energy and higher uh, horsepower motor, you know. So you need to understand. But certain areas, what type of uh, um, dust level to be maintained. Uh, like, for example, if somebody is designing an air handling unit with the HIFA filters for the our office administration area, that is that is not a good design. You understand? At the same time, if somebody is designing an OT without HIFA filters, only with the fine filter, they'll stop. That is also not a good design. Okay? So this you should understand. Uh, there are various standards, filter efficiencies, like pre-filters, uh, like, for example, uh, it, it, this can have 15 to 20 micron. You know, 1 micron is 10 to the power of minus 6 millimeter and fine filters and HIFA filters. Uh, then most of the time, you understand from the negative pressure, it should be always air exhausted directly uh, outdoors in there. And because, uh, as I told you, um, various routes for the infection. In Module 2, we have studied three ma major routes. An airborne infection control technique, how we can do during the design. Proper HVAC design, proper space planning, and uh, of course, other things are coming, monitoring, proper maintenance, and all the things. But, but for us, the proper HVAC design is one of the important things for the airborne infection control. When it comes to space design, because during interactive with the architect and uh, structural engineers, we should always try to have a separate uh, area, sterile area, for example. Uh, some, I have seen many hospital, uh, the, the CSSDs, that is, sterilization department may be within the center portion of the hospital. That is not the right way process. This infection, uh, the sterilization area should be always uh, the service building, which should be slightly at the end of the hospital, in the process, actually. And then uh, dirty materials, movement, you should have a separate path for the dirty materials. For that, you need to have a separate air handling units. Okay. Then uh, for the OT and all the things, you should have separate stop changes, wash areas, so these all uh, come by experience and plus um, you should also refer, uh, that is what nowadays architect should also learn uh, partly related with the um, uh, um, air conditioning. Little bit they should study. At least I know in some of these universities in US and uh, Middle East, uh, the, as a part of academic course, the, the architects also being taught the basic of the air conditioning system in that. As I told you, we need to have a separate individual zoning, inf uh, filtration to remove the contaminants, ultra clean. We should also keep, keep uh, positive and negative pressure, air changes to remove the pollutants, and then easily accessible for the ductwork for cleaning. And uh, you should also keep some of the other points like uh, uh, you, you should don't use any products in your design which contain solvents, glues, and plastics. And uh, airborne particulates, uh, normally in, in your filter media or something, you should understand. And then uh, controlled ventilation, the proper design, occupants behavior, use of healthy building materials, all together, uh, when you study during the initial stage of the design, it will definitely improve the indoor air quality in that. You know, the exhaust air from the airborne infection, isolation rooms, associated anti-rooms and associated toilet rooms shall not be combined with the, any other non-airborne infection isolation room. These are important points you should keep in your mind. And uh, similarly, uh, the operation that has rooms, you know that it's 100% fresh air. The operating room shall be provided with the primary supply diffusers as described and all the things this we will see in when we are designed. Uh, we also should have a diffuser. I mean, we call this uh, grills or diffusers or a supplier a diffuser like that. Uh, how we have to have a unidirectional flow and it should be how it should be, the air should flow downwards. Uh, this all, what should be the velocity? Uh, this all we should have recommended, you should keep in your mind when you are designing your duct design, air distribution system design. And uh, should this is just a parameter. Actually, uh, this is basically which I have taken from uh, you Dubai uh, healthcare, but uh, every country has got like SIPS has got a uh, same standard, more or less same, different parameters. They normally keep it in their mind. ASHRAE has also got a similar type of uh, different parameters for their contaminants and then acceptable limits also in that, just for an uh, idea. I'm just quickly, I am uh, I have compiled uh, from the ASHRAE, the different kind of uh, hospital inside condition to be maintained. Uh, some of the uh, critical points you should note down uh, when you are uh, taking designing a surgery and critical care, uh, so these are the major points you should note down. Please, you can read it. And then if you have doubt, you can ask me. 
then we have a obn gynecology area where the deliveries or where the after the delivery post delivery pre delivery they all do it in that and then you have a delivery rooms then we have a recovery rooms uh, that is post operative rooms and uh, so these all different kinds conditions to be maintained then you have a different kind of nursery source then we have a patient room um, where we sometimes we have isolation rooms in, for the infected patients you know these all various are uh, this all i have taken from ashray in that you know laboratory is also where you have so much fume hoods you know different kind of uh, um, um, safety cabinets in biological lab you have a chemical fume hoods biological safety cabinets and then chemical lab you have fume hoods animal lab physical lab so these all the last, the safety cabinets also categorized into class 1 class 2 like that uh, this all uh, referred very clearly in ashray applications in that this all you should understand when we are designing a laboratory in the hospital so particularly um, we have different kind of uh, uh, guidelines uh, professional societies which normally they do especially uh, icus and ots australia we have like for example india we have indian society of critical care medicine when it comes to uk we called it the health technical memorandum which i mentioned when it comes to ashra usa we have to ashra and then cdc all the things in there just for your idea only this all the international standards you can always follow it up like as i told you ashra standard the filtrations normally they recommend uh, different kind of um, ratings mi minimum efficiency reporting value that is called as mv or v uh, ratings so normally when you specify any filters in air handling units you have to be very clear what type of me or we rating rating in that you know um, the that hifa filtration is only mandatory for the protective environment and isolation room this is very important as i told you you don't recommend hifa filtration in a for a normal office area because hifa filters or first of all capital cost is very high it also had lot of pressure uh, drop and then you static pressure in that so these are the different kind of uh, mur rating uh, average or how much it will arrest these are the mur filters suppose if you have a mur uh, ratings 1 to 4 5 to 8 uh, so why are we have to apply the different kind of applications this also i mentioned or how much uh, particle size range it will control so this all specified by the ashra in that and then um, as i told you we have also nowadays um, different kind of Uh, as I said, the, the standard ASHRAE standard 52, the test uses an arrow. Especially, um, uh, you need to filters also uh, the various manufacturers or manufacturing filters, various media they use. Uh, as I told you, filtration is an important upcoming technology now. Uh, so uh, different uh, materials, you need to be very very careful. Uh, uh, use the proper filtration uh, uh, material. and proper standard in that and then as i told you hifa efficiency filters um uh, for the most of the hifa filters are recommended for um, operation theaters and uh, icu in that then sometimes we go for ultra wide uh, um, uh, germicidal irradiation technology but this is very rarely nowadays they are using um, uh, but uh, definitely this is also another important latest technology then we have also a catalytic air cleaners uh, these also uh, they are recommending as day 170 but uh, these all definitely is all very expensive depends upon uh, what type of hospital if you are having a very very super super specialty hospital probably you have to consider all this type of uh, filtration in your ac design depending upon that now at the end of the my model 3 i will show want to show some figures you see that and some of the air handling units practical uh, air handling units locations of their plant room you i i put the reason also you take care for ot facing downward this is not as per the ashtray standard so this is a wrong design similarly you see that heat recovery i i told you in the air handling unit room this are uh, heat recovery units are there so how these people are intake for air handling units exhaust for so it uh, exhaust is coming it is again getting depending upon the air movement directly going to the intake You, you should note down in that then um, see uh, if some of their handling units see the condition how this uh, the coil cooling coil condition how the blow is conditions are not this almost 36 years old in oti operation center oti in one of the super specialty hospital in oman i have taken in that 
So this is how uh, normally a uh, typical air distribution system, a laminar flow to be maintained in OT. This is how the inside the OT it looks like. So these all uh, just to give an idea, we will review it when we are taking some this thing in there. So this is how I said, told you the plant rooms. Collectively, we keep so much uh, plant rooms. It should be speciously designed so that people will have a sufficient place for maintaining and then for monitoring. You see that everywhere we have pressure monitoring, things all which are linked to the BMS in that. And then, um, as I told you, we have a, this is a carrier latest design, uh, fan coil units. Uh, they have uh, uh, re recently, they come out with this latest design. They call as intro fan hybrid hydronic terminal unit. Uh, with the intermittent occupancy, for example, especially the uh, ward area, patient area, uh, some, it all depends upon the occupancy of the hospital, like a hotels in that. So we also want to have the save the energy on that purpose. This type of FCUs are designed. So you should uh, read and update uh, the latest uh, the because there are only major four companies are there: Carrier, Train, York, MacUA who are major manuf uh, top manufacturers of air conditioning equipments, especially on the uh, air handling unit and FCUs and chillers. So you should uh, keep in touch with them, get their regular updates of the technological advancement, and you should introduce in your design. So these are some of the general requirements, uh, especially uh, when you are trying to design or select the air handling units, in addition to some of the points what I told earlier. Um, uh, uh, very important point is belt and belt fan drive trains external to the AHU, whether supply or extract should be easily visible without the need to remove the access hours. Many because from the because it's our handling units are running 24 hours and uh, we don't know the filters, uh, the, the condition of the belt alignment is also an important thing. So that that will be very good for the for the people of operation and maintenance, particularly the facilities management, you know. Similarly, the key for voltage uh, in supply duct should have a metal case so that they cannot support the fungal growth. So, um, so these are all energy recovery, fire and smoke dampers. So should have a proper access door. These are some of the things you should read it and keep these points in your mind when you are really doing selection in that. So these are the final uh, one thing. Um, always, whenever you design any air handling unit or any duct uh, distribution, which I'm going to come next stage also, always follow the guidelines, ASHRAE, WHO, NORTCA, National Association of the Cleaning, and regularly um, check and correct the ventilation standards to dilute and remove impurities. As much as possible, provide the local hooding with the exhaust for bathrooms and kitchens, Don't do so that it should not mix with that. Don't try to have a central one because there should, should be always a possibility this type of air will always get leaked to the uh, contaminant area, from the contaminant area to the non-contaminant area during the transport of this type of uh, to the duct network. So you have to be very, very careful in that. Okay. So this is how uh, the final one. So with this, I will end it and I'll go for the model four next. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.